Don't be surprised if Sean Strickland's next fight will be against middleweight champion Israel Adesanya to headline UFC 293 in Sydney. In today's video, I'm going to explain why this makes a lot of sense and go through every little angle when it comes to this fight potentially being put together. And I'm sure you saw it on my channel. I did a video on this already with Strickland's big win over Abus Magomedov last night in the main event of UFC Vegas 76. Strickland getting the finish in the second round. And if this was the other way around, if Abus was the one who had finished Sean Strickland, I guarantee you there would be more talk about a middleweight title for Abus Mega Madoff. So why is it any different for Sean Strickland? Well, you can make a few arguments. First off, Abus uh, finishes a lot of fights in highlight real fashion. His UFC debut is proof of that when he finished Dustin Solfus. He's a little bit younger than Strickland here. Not by much, but still a little bit younger. Actually, no, they're pretty much the same age. So that's out the window as well. But Abus is international. He has, he has a big audience over there. That's another reason that he would push there. But really, Sean Strickland is also a fresh matchup. In fact, Sean Strickland has some built-in trash talk with Israel Adesanya already. And I think that could lead to him getting the fight. And we'll show that in a second here. Uh, Strickland, back-to-back -back wins now. Nasruddin Mimovov, kind of like he talked in the post-fight. Uh, Nasruddin Mimovov on short notice. He steps up to the plate and beats him. Now he beats Abus Magomedov. That's two prospects that the UFC was trying to push as new contenders in the middleweight division, and Strickland has beat both of them. Now, the argument against Strickland not getting the shot are a couple things. He did lose. He's 2-2 two and two in his last four fights. One of them was against Alex Pereira. That win has aged quite well, because the fight after that, Pereira ended up knocking out middleweight champion Israel Adesanya, and I realized the fight after that, Pereira lost, but still... We've seen that Pereira can knock out a lot of guys in that weight class. So him losing to Pereira, I don't think is as big of a deal as people were making it out at the time. Then he loses to Jared Cannon here in the fight after. A very close fight. You can see it there. Split decision loss. I personally thought Strickland lost, but still, um, that's that, that's still one of those fights that you can look back on and didn't necessarily uh, you know, look bad in, in the long run because we saw what Cannonier did in his last fight to Marvin Vittori. Cannonier is a top middleweight fighter. So the fact that Strickland even made it that close, I think gives evidence that he is a contender in this weight class here so that's another thing again if you want to nitpick about the record he's got two wins that makes a lot of sense the other thing is Strickland didn't look like he took a lot of damage in last night's fight I'm sure we'll get the the official word this week but it looks like he's pretty healthy at the time uh, the fight took place was July 1st this card is taking place on September 9th that's plenty of time for Strickland to get in a full camp he's based in Vegas he'll have the PI at his disposal if there are any issues there there's just a lot of things to like here for Sean Strickland and I mentioned it there there is a bit of back and forth um, he, he's been at it with Israel at Adesanya for a while. He mentioned it in the post-fight interview. He mentioned Adesanya earlier this week in the buildup. And here's just some crash talk uh, courtesy of MMA Weekly uh, that we saw from last year at UFC 276. I mean, Strickland looked pretty good in terms of the war of words. And I think this sort of leads to his case uh, of a good buildup for a fight with Adesanya. Just listen to what he has to say here. What was it like 2-0 against Izzy? Izzy, what was it, 2-0? Did you watch the whole fight? No, I don't watch Exactly, do your f***ing job next time. Oh. oh man, I made the champion man with his and frosted tips in his little watch. Oh no! <laughs> I'm just joking. Hey, Izzy is a savage, bro. Hey, watch out. Down. Hey, what happened before we walked on stage? Hey, hey, I hey. I smacked you on the ass like my Bro, bro, you're, bro, you're porn hub. It's just that's with facts. cartoons, bro. No man that beats off the cartoons is gonna beat me. Bro, Calm trust down. me. If Calm you ever, down. I can tell you what. If you win this fight, when we fight, I knock you out. I'm gonna do a TikTok dance over your grave. Oh, f look at this grown ass man on TikTok. Maybe that's the problem, bro. And the you don't want this guy's a champion. Do something about you it. You don't want this guy's a do champion. Do something about it then. Bro, bro, do something about it. Bro, I will walk outside with you right now. Right now, you want to get my number? Step. Come on, um, bro. I will walk. Right there, I smacked you on your ass. The Dude. Listen, bro, you're gonna break a f nail. Calm down. I break your Calm face. Down. I'll Calm break your face. Hey, I'll Alex, break my nail in your get face. This man, Alex, get this. Hey, man, you better focus on your guy. Okay, like, like, listen. I know he said a lot of not very politically correct what Strickland said here, obviously, but this sells itself. This is the promo. They have it already. OK, this is the promo right now that they could be using for this potential fight. So this sells itself as far as I'm concerned. And I know there's people watching this who hate Strickland, but you know you would tune in to watch Strickland lose to Israel Adesanya. You know that that would be the case. How do you not watch this and not want to see this fight is my question to you. Now, granted, this was a year ago. This was at UFC Vegas 76 or UFC 276, I should say. But I mean, again, Strickland is healthy and waiting. And, you know, the argument right now is that Jared Cannonier would probably deserve it over Strickland because, again, Cannonier got the win over Israel Adesanya in his last fight or when they or sorry, Cannonier got the win over Strickland in his last fight. I'm, I'm talking over myself here. Um, but uh, the problem is that Cannonier fought Adesanya a year ago, too. So at least with Strickland, he has the argument of, hey, it's a fresh matchup. And we've seen with how the UFC has done their matchmaking recently with 
Abu Magomedov fighting Sean Strickland with Ikram fighting Paulo Costa. There's a number of matchups they've made where they're obviously not making reference to the rankings. And even if you look at the rankings right now, how much further ahead is Jared Cannonier? Not by much, right? So if you look at it here, Jared Cannonier, where are we? Middleweight. Jared Cannonier is ranked number three. Strickland is ranked number seven. Now, at the time of recording this, he'll obviously get, I would think he gets a bump up. We'll see after beating Abu, although, you know, not ranked, maybe not. It's not that big of a difference. I could see them going with this. And again, we've heard that Colby Covington may be fighting Leon Edwards next. Does that make sense from a ranking standpoint or activity standpoint? Absolutely not. Bilal Muhammad deserves it. But we've seen the UFC go away from merit, go away from rankings and go more towards about what would sell more. If you're watching that promo, not thinking that fight would sell decently or sell better than a Jared Cannonier fight. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I just think there's definitely more interest in Sean Strickland and Israel Adesanya right now than there is with Jared Cannonier. And I like Jared a lot. It's got nothing to do with him. I would love to see him get another opportunity. He himself did not take a ton of damage against Marvin Vittori. I just think if you're the UFC, Sean Strickland and Adesanya is going to do better viewership wise and everything than it would be with Jared Cannonier. And here's another quick example. And this isn't the be all end all. Sean Strickland's YouTube channel, right? He's got the podcast. He's done eight videos. He's already got almost 24,000 subscribers. Every video has got you know, look at this, 170,000 views for the de debut episode, 59,000. There's interest in Strickland. Look at most of his interviews. They view very well on YouTube. That to me is what fans are interested in. Whether these are fans that hate him or love him, it doesn't make a difference. There is interest in Sean Strickland. Jared Cannon is not getting numbers like this. Okay. So I think as far as the entertainment argument, Sean Strickland wins that over Jared Cannon That's why I think he could end up getting the shot. Now, the obvious one, I know there's people already watching this video, screaming at me right now, being like, James, what about Robert Whitaker and Drakus Duplessis? Well, let's talk about that, okay? That's going to be taking place uh, a week, uh, oh, well, less than a week. We've got, uh, at the time I'm recording this, it's July 2nd. That fight's going to be on July 8th. We've got Robert Whitaker, Drakus Duplessis. Okay, great fight, right? I think if Whitaker wins, absolutely deserves a shot. Actually, either, either way, the winner of this fight, I don't have an issue getting a title shot. I think it absolutely makes a ton of sense um, as far as the matchup goes, but, 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 you know, as, as far as the winner of this fight, getting the shot uh, against Israel Adesanya next, but here's the problem. This fight's July 8th. UFC 293 is September 9th. If my math is correct here, that's 63 days. And that's not even, that's not even factoring in that these two have a lot of travel, right? It's not like uh, Strickland, who's a local to Vegas, right? He's not having to travel anywhere. Whitaker's got to travel all the way to Vegas to take this fight. He's had a full camp and all that stuff. Drake is coming from South Africa. Those aren't easy flights. So you factor all the travel. You factor that after this fight, they're going to travel back. That's cutting into training camp a little bit. And I know like, you know, fighters have done, you know, a month training camp and all that. There's not a guarantee either that either of these fighters are going to come out healthy as well. Now, I think with Drakus, there's a stronger case to have that fight with Adesanya because of a variety of things that have been said in the media. We don't need to get into that. This isn't a political show. But I think Drakus is the fight that people want to see, even though I think pe people feel like Israel would, be would beat Drakus. I think Israel would beat Sean Strickland as well, too. But I just think that, like, again, Drakus, to me, if we had to rank this, I would go Drakus has the strongest case, then probably Strickland, then Whitaker, because Whitaker's already fought Adesanya twice. Now, the second fight was close. I think you could have made the argument that Whitaker may have edged that one out over Israel Adesanya, but the fact of the matter is he didn't. So, and I know this is in Sydney. So again, that would benefit Whitaker, an Aussie fighter himself. The UFC would probably want that a bit more, but again, there's no guarantees here. So we're going to have to see how this fight unfolds. Uh, things will definitely be changing a week today, depending on how the outcome goes. I've said it before, and I really like Drake's a lot. I think Whitaker wins this fight. But if he doesn't go out there and get a quick finish and he takes a bit of damage, who knows if he'll be healthy enough to take this fight. So that's all I'm kind of looking at here. To me right now, the UFC has a sure thing in Sean Strickland potentially fighting for the title next. Whereas these two, it's a bit of a question mark if they can end up turning this around in time for the title fight. Um, I think if the UFC had their choice, obviously the winner of this fight would be number one. But right now, after what Strickland did last night, I think that was a, a surprise in the sense that, um, look, I thought Strickland was going to win. I did a whole breakdown on the fight with Abus. I thought he was going to win a decision. I didn't think he would finish Abus. I don't think anyone expected Abus to, to gas as quickly as he did. So, but that's got to count for something, right? When you finish fights, that is a way to garner interest in title shots. And I think Strickland certainly did that. And again, we watched the press conference back and forth. There's some good back and forth. Not to say that there wouldn't be good back and forth between Drakus and Adesanya or Whitaker and Adesanya or even Jared Cannon and Adesanya. But I think if we're going by trash talk, Sean Strickland definitely fits that bill compared to both of them because whether you love or hate Strickland, he is very quick-witted when it comes to some of the insults and some of the things along those lines as well. So I think as far as the fight itself, if Strickland was to fight Israel Adesanya, let's talk about that here quickly. Uh, so you see Strickland there, six foot one with a 76 inch reach. Israel Adesanya is six foot four with an 80 inch reach. So you see there height and reach advantage going for Adesanya, but it could be a good showcase for Adesanya as well. If he goes out there and beats Strickland, which I think he would, then that's going to elevate Izzy even more. Look at Chell Sun and how much he antagonized Anderson Silva. It made that fight more interesting. This has similar vibes to it. 
or Strickland's coming for the throat of Adesanya in terms of verbal trash talk and all that. So again, I think it would be interesting. I would pick Adesanya to win. I don't know if he'd finish Strickland because Strickland's a pretty durable guy, pretty tough guy to take out. I would lean more towards a decision. I think if Adesanya did win, it would be a little bit later. But you never know. He might hate Strickland enough where he might want to go for the finish like he did with Alex Pereira. I mean, we did see him knock out Pereira in the last fight, and that was extremely impressive. I mean, that was a high-stakes fight. Imagine if Adesanya lost that. He'd be in a really tough position having two losses to Pereira already. So, again, all I'm throwing out here is I think there is a good possibility we could see Strickland fight um, Israel Adesanya next. And if I had to do a ranking, I know you guys like my tier rankings and stuff, I would go the winner of Dracus and um, and Robert Whitaker being the number one choice for the UFC, assuming they're healthy, assuming they come out of that. But again, that's a big if because you only got 63 days in between the, the two fights. Sean Strickland would have to be second. Third, I would go Cannoneer because, again, he's available and free. And then outside of that, I don't know who else they would look at. But this is the thing. We already know they're going to Sydney. We already know Israel Adesanya is going to be headlining this card. They have to. It's a big market for them. It's something that you know they're, they're going to want to take care of. And the last thing I'll mention uh, that, that is a little bit kind of an interesting tidbit. I think people forget these two used to have the same management. They both used to be with Paradigm. Uh, Adesanya is with Chosen Advisory, who's that part of Tim Simpson's management group that is uh, kind of branched out on their own. Strickland has a management group now that he's with. Uh, it's kind of, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it publicly. They're not promoting him. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, uh, Strickland is with another management group that's not Paradigm. So that again is like something that, you know, maybe before there would have been a hesitation because they were part of the same management group. Right now, I think this makes sense. And I think again, if you're the UFC and you want Sean, Str if you're high on Sean Strickland at all, if you're the UFC and you see what he's doing and you see the numbers and you feel encouraged by it that you want to give him a title shot, now is the time to do this. Because even Whitaker and Drakus, they could end up fighting the winner of a potential audience Sonia and whoever he fights next to there's no there's no there's no saying they can't do that because that's probably what's going to end up happening with Bilal Muhammad if they do end up booking Colby Covington to Lena Edwards so anyways I've talked a lot here if you were upset if you weren't upset I should say with Ikram fighting Paulo Costa with Abus fighting Sean Strickland then you should not care if Sean Strickland gets his title shot because again they would not be caring about the rankings they wouldn't be caring about merit they wouldn't care about the fact that Jared Cannonier has a win over Sean Strickland recently none of that would matter it's all about the bottom line for the UFC and what's going to make them more money and to me Strickland and Adesanya I think would make more money than a Jared Cannonier fight and possibly a Robert Whitaker Drakus fight. Actually, maybe not, not Whitaker, but maybe Drakus. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I just think if Strickland fought out of Sonny, there, there would be a lot of interest from the people that love Strickland for the people that hate him. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram at Lynch on sports. Uh, I'll be doing another video here soon. I'm sure uh, more of these opinion videos and stuff and uh, appreciate you tuning in. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'll talk to you guys soon. My name is James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching.